watching BBN Tonight on your official UK sports station, LEX18. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. All right, welcome back to BBN Tonight. The bye week officially over for Kentucky football. They got back into the swing of things today. Which means, of course, it's time for us to do the same. So let's bring in our guy, Tom Leach, now. Tom, anytime you get ready to play a Mike Leach coach team, you know you're in for a unique challenge. His air raid offense is one of a kind in the SEC. And now that he's in his second year down in Starkville, it looks like the team has bought in. They're playing at a much higher, higher level than they were last season. Here's what Coach Mark Stoops had to say this afternoon. Anytime you're, you're facing a team that, uh, you know, throws the ball upwards of 60 times a game, you know, you better be, has your attention. And, um, you know, Will is doing a really good job of running the offense. You can see his comfort level going higher and higher and getting rid of the football and not putting them in such negative uh, situations as you would, you know, in, in the first year of a program or a young quarterback. And, you know, so you see him playing at a very high level and, in you know, getting to where they want to be. Brad did a nice job a year ago of mixing things up. They will. They're con they're continuing to evolve and grow. And but yet you see the same things Mike's been doing for a long time. Mainly just how well they execute things. Tom, this is a very different offense than the one we saw throw six interceptions in Lexington last season. What are you expecting from the Bulldogs this Saturday? Well, they went to the transfer portal and recruited better personnel to fit the air raid than Coach Leach inherited when he came to Starkville. So uh, also their defense uh, gets overlooked because of all the attention that is generated by the uh, aerial numbers that Mississippi State and all the air raid teams put up. But this team's defensive numbers are, are very solid. Um, hopefully Kentucky can use some of the tactics it used last year to uh, bother the Mississippi State quarterback, but um, I uh, was talking with uh, Freddie Maggard on my radio show today, and uh, he's already deep in done a deep dive on breaking this down. And he said a lot of it's going to come down to Kentucky's ability to win some one-on-one -on -one matchups out on the outside because they're going to deploy so many receivers, and also for the secondary players to come up and make tackles out in space because that air raid is all about finding space. When uh, Coach Mummy was was here with Coach Leach and Coach Hatcher and those guys, they always talked to their quarterbacks about throw to the grass. What that meant was you scan the field where you see grass, that's where you've got a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Throw it there, and if you can break one tackle, it can turn into a big play. So tackling out in space will be crucial for Kentucky. Kind of a, let's, let's go to the rumor mill a little oh, bit that's okay. been picking up a little over the last week or so. Anytime you have a successful program, your head coach obviously going to get brought up for other jobs. Happening a little earlier than usual this year, Yahoo Sports has singled out Coach Stoops as a target to potentially replace Manny Diaz at Miami. Asked about it today, Coach Stoops said he'd rather have it this way than people saying we're trying to run him out of town here. Fans are always going to be a little bit nervous, but it's a good thing when other people do want what you have. Right, Tom? No, absolutely. And Miami, he's coached there. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's uh, understandable that his name would get linked there. But he is uh, building something uh, that could be very special here at Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And he is one of the guys that is, is uniquely uh, positioned to maybe be able to continue to grow this because of his Ohio connections mm -hmm. and that ability to recruit in Ohio expands the base of players that Kentucky can recruit from. Uh, typically it was recruiting just the state of Kentucky and then having to knock heads against uh, a lot of other schools in, in the South maybe. And now they can go up into Ohio and Ohio state's going to get first pick on most guys, but they can only sign 20 to 25 every year. So uh, they can go in and get some really good football players that are sec caliber and I think that's something that uh, he, I think, realized that when he uh, wanted this job. And so, you know, I think the fact that he wanted it, he's done well with it, uh, I think it will take a lot to get him out. All right, Tom, little basketball talk now. We still didn't see a ton of defense, but the BBN has to be pretty happy with how this year's team shot the three in Friday's blue-white game. Combined to shoot 38% with a bunch of different guys shooting them, and that's, of course, without three-point champion C.J. Frederick. Yeah. Listen to what Coach Cal had to say about all of that after the scrimmage probably four, uh, 14, 15, um, when we had Darius and Duran and Terrence and that crew, they could shoot the ball well. 
um, Marcus Teague. I mean, that um, the, my first team could not shoot the ball well. We did not. I like this team. Every day I walk in to practice, I know I'm going to have what I know what I'm getting. There's no confusion. I'm here's what we're doing, guys. Let's get after it. They want to scrimmage and they want to go at each other. Tom, we're running out of time here, but the best shooting team since 2014. <laughs> high praise from Coach Cal. What do you think? I think the best shooting team for three point shooting was actually his second team that gave him the first Final Four trip. And I think you could see some Brandon Knight qualities in Ty Ty Washington. So uh, I don't think shooting will be a problem for this team. All right, Tom, thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk again soon. As always, appreciate your time. More BBN tonight, right after this.